Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, on this little video, we're going to be going over Rotifers before we go back into the workshop, sorry, into the coral room, and we have a look at those little tiny clownfish fry, which have not quite hatched yet. They're due to hatch tomorrow. I'm going to link all these videos together. But we've got to talk about Rotifers first. We've got to talk about that first food that you put into the tank for these little guys to eat after they've absorbed their little yolk sacs and they're free swimming and they're gonna be actively hunting down these little rotifers in amongst the tank. Now, I've made another culture up here. I've also got another tank, which I've been preparing for some time, which I'll show you shortly, with a lot of copepods in, and rotifers and different things, which I've lift, just left nature take its course, and I've been adding a little bit of phyto in there as well. But the green little tank that you're looking at now is my rotifer culture. Now, I just use bog standard, um, my tank water from my from my aquariums from my coral room okay and that's um which is 0 0.25 salinity okay you can use lower some people it's say you can use lower but i've always used it straight out of my tank water tank water straight into this tank and i've filled it up as you can see three quarters of the way to the top and we've got our little salinity refractor meter there which if you're not familiar with you lift up that little lid there, put a few drops of water on there, close the lid over, you look through that, and it's got a little scale inside, okay, which will give you your salinity and your salt readings, okay, which is how much you've got in there. You can get the other ones as well, the hydrometer ones, which are, you literally just dip in the tank, fill it up, and then a little needle will go up and show you whereabouts you are on the scale for your salinity. Right, all you need to do this, guys, is I always put a little heater in there. I find that these little rotifers grow best between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, okay? Any colder than that, and I find they don't go as well. So I put a little heater in there, and I've set that to 21 degrees, okay? Tank's nice and warm. This culture's already been added. But go on eBay, and you can buy a little tiny packet starter cultures of rotifers, and you can buy another little packet. Sometimes they come in a combined kit where you get the phytoplankton as well because the little rotifers need something to feed on and to multiply. So you can see the green water now. So the phytoplankton has been added to that. Make sure when you do get your rotifers, you suspend the bag in the tank that you prepared with your phytoplankton in first, okay? And let them acclimate as well because you can shock them and kill them just like you can fish or shrimp or anything else like that, okay? Because they're living. So make sure you suspend your bag in there for a good 20 minutes first then cut the bag, add a little bit of water in just to be on the safe side, then gently pour them in. And then that's it. Add a little airline, as you can see. I've got a little airline going down onto the bottom there, which has got an open end on. It's got no air stone on it, because I want the big bubbles to come out just to keep that water moving and keeps that suspension there. The phytoplankton will keep suspended in the water and roll around. And then the little rotifers will consume that and then they'll grow. They'll get to an age where they have a breeding age then they'll breed and have thousands and thousands of babies between them all and before you know it, between, well, I give it a good seven days, seven to ten days, you'll have a thriving culture. Keep your eye on the water as well, guys, okay? When it's nice and green like that, obviously there's a lot of food in there for these rotifers to eat. When it starts to go clear, just drip in or pipette full and just get it back to that colour green again, not too thick, just so you can see into the water. You don't want it thick like the pea green where you can't see anything. And they'll keep going. Then all you need is one of these little sieves, okay? And you just literally scoop that in the water, raise it out of the water, collect the rotifers in there, and then wash them out into your fry tank, and your little guys will tuck into those. It's just basically seawater infusoria. You've seen me breed the infusoria on so many of my breeding videos over the years, where we use the broccoli and different banana skins and things to get that micro microculture of infusoria which is basically minute micro life which lives in amongst your tanks and every tank's got it in there it's just it gets predated on and you need to get it concentrated for the babies to feed them okay because you've got a lot of little hungry mouths to feed it's very abundant in nature but obviously we've got a contained little tank of water there so we've got to create it and we've got to bulk them up as much as we can for uh, for the babies to eat so I think what we should do now is go into the coral room and I will show you the babies. They're due to hatch tomorrow. I'm going to be moving the slate out tonight 
So let's go in there and have a check that out and see what's going on. Now, but before we go in there, guys, I thought what I'd show you is this. I've just made a plankton reactor. Super simple to do. Just get yourself a big bit of tube. I picked this bit up off eBay. It's a little bit scratched up, but it's just an off cut. I was lucky to come across that. And I made a nice little laser cut. Mark's Aquatics base for it with one of my Zebra Plecos on, laser etched into it. Flame polished all the edges, made it look all tidy. And we put a little pipe, which goes through here, inside, right into the centre. So those big bubbles are going to rise up right to the top and keep that water moving. And we're going to breed some phytoplankton in here for the coral room. So I thought, instead of buying one of these things, which costs stupid money for what they are, I thought I'd make one. So there you go, super simple to do. Drill a hole, stick a bit of pipe in, get a bit of pipe, stick it on a bit of base. Couldn't get more simple than that. And then you fill it up with seawater. Sorry about all this mess, I've got rubbish everywhere in here at the moment. We're all over the place here on Mark's Aquatics. We've got so much going on. But there you go, super, super simple thing to make. And, uh, and there's the old rotifers again. Right, where was I? Okay, yep, we're going to the coral room now. I'll just show you the little guys here as well while, I, while we're here quickly. All the little, little crevensis swimming around. My little cherry shrimp that came in there as a little baby. Look at that. And I've also got this little tank made up here as well. Which I've put some little endless in just to keep it cycling away. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I might breed something there for you guys. And uh, as we go along we can see how my little zebras are doing. Look at that. There they are. They're all in their pots. Nice and fat. They've got some activity in there as well. They may be going to spawn soon which is going to be great that's the female there and we've got a couple of males there as well in there look. so she's going to be trying to get into them pots in no time at all right to the coral room my goodness look at all these corals we've got hundreds of them in here at the moment lovely big Australian shipment come in some lovely lobophilias not actually there's a trachophilia I've got that completely wrong we've got some lovely torches and we've also got some walling hammers as well. Huge, great plating Monty at the back there. And my little fox face keeping everything nice and clean. There's some nice little zoas over the top here, different ones. All the way along, all the different types of Acropora. Some more torches, some Pavonas, Duncan corals here. Huge, great colonies of zoas there. Different types of Acros. Some more torches and little hammers. All the way along we got some green star polyps as well. They're not the brightest of guys, but uh, they're not too bad. They'll make someone a nice little addition. And well, I haven't shown you these guys yet either. Look, look at that, I've got a little pair of Clarkies off one of my local guys that pops over Martin, who uh, I swapped for a, I'm not sure, no actually, I think I bought these off him. And um, a lovely pair of Clarkies in there, and they breed for him quite readily as well. And uh, there's a little male. And here comes the female. They've been together a while and they said they lay eggs. It's like I said before guys, it's picking up pairs that have already bonded. I know in the last video a lot of you guys were saying that um, if you just stick them in the tank and the bigger one will be the female and the smaller one will become the male or they'll grow up and the bigger one, more dominant one and all that, which is very true. But I've had them, like I said before, where you've, I've put males in with them and they've grown up together and the females just do not take to that one male and you've got to swap the male out and give them and put another male in there and it's very like Siamese fighting fish as well the old betters um, sometimes when I've bred them in the past you you can put them in and those females will not take to those males or the males will not take to those females and they just won't breed and you'll just chase them and chase them religiously and harass them until they're uh, they either die or you've got to move them out quickly if you don't catch them in time but now we're going to go across to Mr and Mrs and their little babies there they are, look at that. Eggs are super black now that can see the little eyes in them. It's up an odd angle, this is through the glass, so it's... I'm not sure if you can see them there. But you can see those little bellies. I'll try and get you a better... <laughs> a little... a better picture of them, but... Um, when I actually move them. Now where I'm going to be moving them is... I'll just zoom you back out that way again. Sit down. Knock everything flying. I'm going to be putting them into this tank, which looks a right mess, and it's like that for a reason, okay? Because 
I've got my little torch here. I'm just going to put that to one side. I'll be needing that in a minute. As you can see, I've got various coral frags in there, some pulsing xenia and different things, which I've just put in there. But the back wall there, I've left all the algae grow, all the algae grow on that side, all over the substrate. I've got nothing in this tank whatsoever, apart from thousands upon thousands of copepods, okay, that I've been breeding in here. I've got a sponge filter on the top. Yes, so we've got tons upon tons of micro life in here. There's rotifers, copepods, all different kinds of stuff. Now, a lot of the time they hang on the on the glass there on the side. Now you can see all the little little copepods there. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to soup up this little my little O-light torch, which is fantastic. I got this. These guys sent me this torch a while ago, and it's uh, absolutely fantastic. You can double click it, and it's the one I used when I went away in the bunkers. Absolutely stunning little bit of kit, little magnet, little magnet charger on there, and it's brilliant in the um, in the in the fish rooms. It really is. So I'm going to double click that, and you're going to see a huge amount of light booming in from the side. Now, if you watch, you'll see thousands upon thousands. Look at all those little guys in there. Look, and as I move the torch, it's making them all bounce and jump away from the side where they are because that light's quite intense. But it's just to show you how much is in there. And if you look on the back wall as well, there is thousands upon thousands of these little copepods and rotifers which are living in this tank. And that's what we want for when the clownfish babies hatch out. Thousands of them, thousands of minutes. Now I've got a little sponge filter which is in my which is in here, which is I'm gonna put on the top now. And uh, that's gonna um that's going to prevent the fry being sucked down that tube at the top there, okay? It's just, I've just made a little hole in it, okay, like so. Let me turn this crazy light off. That's better. And I've just made it as a cap like that. So that's now going to sit over the top of there, like so. I think I can pop it on the top there now for you. So you can see what's going on. And there you go. Now that sits on there and that will strain that water through as well, polish it up and you're acting as a little filter. You've got to keep your eye on them because they do clog up the fine filters quite quickly but there's not a great deal in here which is going to be moving around settlement wise so it should be it should be fairly good. So we got them above, very very close to hatching, they should hatch tomorrow with a bit of luck or the next day but I'm going to set them up in the bottom tank ready because I don't want these guys to be predating on them when they hatch. Look at that, proud little mum and dad. Anyway guys, I'll get back to you when I've put the slate in the bottom and I've set it up with a little airline and then we're going to get ready for the hatch. Okay guys, I just made a couple of adjustments there. Now I've got one of these small um, little Zenzeal filters here, the little small sponge filters, the little airlift filters, and I've taken it apart and I've just turned it upside down where the clear pipe where the air would normally escape from and that fits perfectly over the pipe for the return, for the for the sump, okay? Now what I've added now, so because before it was clogging up very, very quickly and nearly trying to overflow the tank. So I kept my eye on it for five or 10 minutes and it was creeping up slowly towards the top. This has settled out lovely now. I've turned the flow right down and we've now added a little air stone and I've cable tied one of my frag plugs to it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the slate and I'm going to put the slate in this way, tilt it towards me, like so. Then you guys can see the babies and we can turn and adjust this airflow then right the way down. So it's just tickling away on those little eggs, making sure they're uh, nicely oxygenated before they hatch. And it also helps them break free of the little egg case as well, okay? Right, okay guys, I've moved the slate. I've put another one back in there. As you can see they're a little bit stressed because their eggs have disappeared but I put another slate in there for them so within a couple of hours they'll calm down and um, start feeding again and we've moved our little babies onto the, the little slate and we put an airline there as I said before we've got the babies there and I put it so we can get a nice little a nice little close-up of these babies for you in their little egg cases look at that I'll try and get a bit closer. You can see all the tiny little eyes.
shining away there looking at you saying come on in we want to come out and play look at that fantastic there is lots of babies in there as well and a little air stone now I'll just show you you just turn it on and you only want a very slow amount of bubbles okay and you'll see them starting to rise through them and all that will do that's recreating water flow that's drawing let me come back a bit that's going to be drawing that water up there up the side of that slate that air is just like it does with the airlift filters I've put a frag plug there because I want the air to escape and not get trapped because when these guys hatch they need somewhere to escape and go out okay so I've made the mistake in the past of leaning the slate against the glass which then creates a lot of bubbles here and they get trapped along that edge so we don't want that we want them to break free of that egg case and shoot straight out up into the water column waiting for those little rotifers there they can start getting to work on those once their little yolk sacs have, um, have all been used up but there you go look at those little guys fantastic stuff never ceases to amaze me breeding fish and it never ever gets old it's absolutely a fantastic thing to do and it's a fantastic hobby for any one of you guys to get into so anyway guys if you're new to my videos hit the old like and subscribe button I really would appreciate it helps me out a lot and it's great to have more of you guys on board that I can teach all these new handy hints tips and tricks so you can be more successful in the uh, in our little aquarium hobby right okay guys it's hatch night tonight so what we're gonna do I'll just turn the airline off for you just take that down a bit there you go and I'll zoom in on them and you can see all those little babies there all clustered together some of them are starting to move as you can see and there's quite a few there so what we're going to do is now is it's nearly lights out time and they always hatch at night so if you're going to have these in a separate tank have a separate tank for them ready now this is this is day seven okay and basically i've taken them from mum and dad's tank up there i put them in another slate but in, that, in their case a nice big piece of acrylic so they can lay the next batch on if they like and there's all the babies are down in this tank here which is absolutely round with copepods rotifers and things i've got the big plankton reactor fired up there which i made which i showed you earlier that's all ready to go that's full of um, phytoplankton which i'm bringing on you don't have to do that you can buy the stuff if you don't want to uh, if you want to build a reactor you can see the copepods running around another little guy around there somewhere there he is you might see him walking about but there's quite a few of them in there so they're going to be predating on those as they get older and there's quite a few if you look on the surface of the water right there i'm not sure if you can see it or not but it's a bit of a a bit of a bloom of babies on the surface of baby rotifers you can see them all in the water because i've been adding see there they are you can just see them there all on the surface little tiny white little specks around that algae which i've left because they'll feed on all these little algae and things, all the babies, so um, I've left all that. That one's a bit cleaner. But like I said, it's hatch night tonight, so with a, in a bit of luck, we'll have a good hatch tonight, and I can show you some of the little babies in the morning. Right guys, it's the next day, and we've got some little tiny Nemo swimming around. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. I'll try and get you a better view of them from underneath. You can see I put a lot of rotifers in the water. You can see those little white dots there swimming around and the little clownfish are zipping around in between them on the surface there. Just feed the way on the surface. The camera's top. He's trying to focus on them, but they're so small. So you'll have to bear with me a, a little bit. But there we go. You can see a few there whizzing around, which is fantastic. We've still got some on the slate. Now you'll find this sometimes. You'll have some will hatch out before others and um, but not to worry just keep that air supply going very very slowly up the front of the of the eggs not actually on the eggs but just in front of them so as you can see it just keeps them oxygenated and free of fungus and stuff like that you can see we got some out which is really nice I think there's about maybe 10 15 swimming around in the aquarium at the moment I got lots of bits in here to 
and all that big wall of COVID pods and things which they can feed on. There's another little guy there up by the, the surface. I'll try and zoom in on him because he's next to something and that might focus a bit better. There you go. Now what they tend to do, baby clownfish, is hoover along the surface as he's doing there, you see? His little mouth will be going and as those rotifers go and float to the surface, he'll be sieving them away with his little mouth and taking them in. New life. Fantastic. Look at that. And the rest of his little mates are over there. And behind the sponge filter as well. The beautiful little blue eyes with their born. Or little patches of blue on them. And there you go guys. There is as close as I can get with my camera today. There is the Rotifers swimming around in a little bubble of water that I've just put on the top of a bit of Tupperware so you can see these guys swimming around I'll try and hold it very still for you but the air pump for my reactor is on the uh, on my drainage unit here so uh, it's slightly vibrating so it's not going to be too too clear but you can see them like little tiny little bells swimming around and they got little like cilia hair at the front which will drag in that phytoplankton and their little egg cases are stored at the back but there's some lovely adults in there now and that's what they're going to be feeding on those and the babies as they get stronger and it's like I said earlier in the, in the video guys rotifers are a must you've got to be feeding baby clownfish on rotifers they won't eat anything else they're not going to eat powdered food this pre-made powdered tiny baby fry food that you can get for different types of fish these guys need live rotifers to, to, to uh, to get any further ahead in life and without them sadly they're all going to die so this is why a lot of people when they breed clownfish they don't realize they say well i had some lovely eggs and they were great parents and everything else and yes the parents look after the eggs absolutely amazingly but obviously they hatch of a night and then when they've hatched of a night they drift away with the current and then they go into the phytoplankton and all the little micro life creatures that live in the sea and they feed on those and they end up in the plankton chain before settling on the bottom and um, and taking up hosting a little anemone of their own, forming their own little colonies later on as they get older. But without that first, these rotifers for their first food, they're certainly not going to make it, okay? So it's imperative that you make a culture up first in advance before you um, before you even start your clownfish off because otherwise, like I say, they're not going to make it. Well, I think I'm going to end it on this video today. We've still got some more video to make tomorrow. When these guys come out, I'll do another video I'll do a series of these growing up right the way up through to adulthood if I can because I'm going to be keeping a lot of these in my system here as well so um, and I'll only get I think I'm only going to be breeding these guys once and it was just to really show you how it's done and how um, how easy it is once you get an established bonded pair and you're away okay anyway guys thanks for tuning in thanks for watching love you all your stars take care and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics bye for now And we're ready to go again. Bye bye. Just me and my guitar.